2020 was a year filled with delays for the movie industry, with many of the bigger blockbusters planned for the year still not being released to this day. But, that being said, if you know where to look, there was still quite a lot of good stuff to be seen. Um, with that said, here are my 10 favourite movies of 2020. Just a handful of ground rules before we start. These are judged by UK release dates. A few of these films, if you like, walk into the IMDb page, they say they were initially released in 2019, but living in the UK, I did not have a chance to see them back in 2019, so they make it over to this list. Um, just to clear up any confusion. Also, these are just my opinions. You may agree, you may disagree. If you do, then tell me. Tell me what you think I've missed. There's a chance I just didn't see your favourite movie, and hey, you might bring it to my attention. That should be pretty cool. That's enough of that, I think. Uh, let's get on the list, shall we? Before we start, however, I do have one honourable mention, and that is, of course, Hamilton. Despite what the Golden Globes may say, this isn't really a film, it's more of a filmed live performance, so it doesn't make my list for the same reasons that 3 in the Morning, Intolerance, or 846 don't. That being said, film or not, this has to be mentioned because it is one of the best pieces of media released in 2020. To have such a wonderful show finally accessible to the wider public, and to present it with such great direction and editing on top of the already incredible set design, costume design, music and performances that made this such a huge hit back in 2015. Just know that if I did pull the Golden Globes and just sort of squinted and pretended this was a film, it would be incredibly high on this list. Anyway, to the list proper, at number 10 I have Tenet. The cultural impact and legacy of this film is really its own discussion separate from the actual quality of the film. While Tenet may not have been the film to save cinema or whatever, it's still an incredibly engaging science fiction and action movie. John David Washington and Robert Pattinson make such a great on-screen duo and much like with Inception before it, Nolan uses the core gimmick of Tenet to craft a series of visually interesting and engaging action set pieces that really help to tell what would otherwise be a rather simple story. A simple story if you're paying attention enough, that is. At number 9 I have Bill and Ted Face the Music. I am a huge fan of the Bill and Ted movies, especially Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey from 1981. And let me tell you, I am so happy this film was able to capture so much of what made Bill and Ted so special. In a world that is more cynical than ever before, it was genuinely refreshing to see a movie headlined by two of the most blindly optimistic and carefree characters in cinema history. Now, for those of you who aren't as emotionally invested in the story of these two airheads as I am, this might be a little self-indulgent and callback heavy, but this film does offer a very satisfying conclusion to a franchise that felt like it would always be a little open-ended. What else can I say but party on dudes and be excellent to each other. At number 8 I have Soul. There was a time where Pixar would just personify random objects to teach life lessons, simple life lessons about friendship and family and whatever. Now they question the meaning and purpose of finding your reason to live and the nature of death itself. For kids. Soul is a perfect example of a film that is funny and visually engaging enough to hold the attention of a child, but is far more aimed at the adults in the audience when it comes to its themes and messaging. It is a beautiful film that is not afraid to take a light-hearted look at some incredibly deep and complicated topics, even more so than some of the best in the studio's history. Now, I didn't do this on purpose, but at number 7 I have The Trial of the Chicago Set. Aaron Sorkin found his niche a long time ago, and he will continue to bring us 
incredible screenplays about real world remarkable people and I will continue to sing his praises for it. Chicago 7 is uncompromising in its retelling of this famous story, never at any point allowing the audience to debate what really went down or who was really in the wrong here. This is a story that deserved to be told this way and Sorkin delivered the exact film that he needed to. At number 6 I have The King of Staten Island. I like Judd Apatow's movies as much as everybody else, but to be honest I did not expect to be putting his latest star vehicle on my best of the year list, but damn this is a good movie. <laughs> the King of Staten Island embodies the spirit of its star Pete Davidson in a way that, as a fan of his, gives justification to following him for as long as I have, and for those people who weren't already convinced, should offer a window into what they've been missing. It is equal parts a lowbrow slacker comedy with the expected gross out humour, and a heartfelt domestic drama focusing on grief. These tones are balanced on a knife's edge, and make for an engaging viewing experiences that most mainstream comedies simply can't pull up. At number 5 I have 1917. Going all the way back to January, we have the last film I saw in a cinema before everything shut down, and what a way to go out. 1917 is a technical marvel. This film draws you in from start to finish. I found it so easy to just get lost in the emotion and character of, of each individual situation, allowing for the emotion and the energy of the whole film to just wash over me. It's proper edge of your seat tense. It's just remarkable. At number four, I have Feels Good Man. By far the best documentary I saw this year. This film takes an absurd situation and explains in a very clear way why it is so important and what we can learn from it moving forward. Without ever really losing sight of how ridiculous the whole Peppy the Frog thing actually is. It is a far more optimistic film than I expected that passes judgement on both sides of the political spectrum for attempting to weaponise such an innocent character created with the purest of intentions. And for flipping the life of an innocent comic writer upside down as he was caught in the crossfire. I think most of us could benefit from a lesson in the power social media and the Streisand effect really have, and this film is a perfect example of why. Moving into the top three, it was incredibly difficult for me to separate these movies, so pinch of salt when it comes to the rankings really, but at number three I have Parasite. Do you really need me to tell you that Parasite is a masterpiece? I mean, this is one of the best constructed movies I've ever seen. Bong Joon-ho is able to craft a perfect scene in a way that very few filmmakers have ever been able to achieve. And with Parasite, he is able to push those skills to their absolute breaking point. This film messes with genre so perfectly, leaving the audience to question every single small minuscule little detail. There are no heroes, there are no villains, there is only circumstances. Now at number two I have Uncut Gems. This may be the antithesis to Parasite as the Safdie brothers have a far more aggressive and visceral approach to filmmaking. This movie perfectly captures the feeling of stress and anxiety in a way I don't think I've ever seen from a film before, making for an incredibly intense experience that never once takes its foot off the gas to let the audience breathe. Match all of that with a genuinely great lead performance from Adam Sandler of all people and you have one of the the most engaging and interesting films of the last year. But with all that, my number one had to be Jojo Rabbit. It seems that the more famous Taika Waititi gets, the stranger 
his indie efforts need to be. And with his latest feature, he is the most off the wall he has ever been. Half loud, hilarious, satirising of fascism, half genuinely heartfelt play to human decency and connection. This film juggles tones so perfectly, making the audience want to both laugh out loud and just burst into tears in the exact same moment. This film left me with a profound feeling that whatever the world would throw at us in these next few years, we would get past it as a species in the way we always have before. And quite frankly, that was a feeling that became increasingly more important to hold on to as the year went on. So without question, this was the film that stuck with me the most and needed to be my personal favourite. There you have it guys, that is my 10 or 11 kind of favourite films from 2020. Tell me what I missed, tell me what you loved, tell me if you disagree with me at all. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd if you want to, you don't have to. I don't even know if you're still watching, probably not according to my analytics. <laughs> That's about all I need to say, so see you later. She said if you with me, I'll never go away. That's when I stopped and I took another look at my baby. She said if you with me, I'll never go away.